Hello and welcome back in Ivandaria. Or if you're new here, welcome to this new type of video on my channel. My name is Elvin and Ivandaria is this original fantasy setting that I'm working on. A couple of years ago, I used to do a lot of time-lapse videos of my artworks, showing how they came to be from sketch to final effects. I enjoy seeing other artists' progress and from back then I know people like my time-lapse videos as well. But this time around I want to do them slightly differently by actually explaining a little bit what I'm doing in this voiceover that you're hearing right now. So I'll talk about why I'm using that kind of brush or what layers I'm creating and usually working with. And also probably talk about uh, world building stuff for my project in general. So don't expect this to be a tutorial necessarily, even though I will explain my step-by-step -step progress here and there, but um, the concept is more of a draw and talk kind of experience. Kind of like a, a condensed, very sped up art stream, if you will. Without much further ado, I hope you will enjoy this video. Um, if the audio is a kind of a weird, still, I'm, I'm still working on this. I'm still very new to audio recording and everything. So, so bear with me as I'm trying to figure out the best settings. Um, but yeah, let's just dive into this artwork. And as always, if you want to learn more about Ivanary in general, support my art, videos, live streams, visit my Patreon page. Link is in the description. Here we go. Um, yeah, I started this drawing in Procreate um, and as you can see it started out a little differently than what it came to be in the end. Uh, it was originally supposed to be just a portrait of one of the characters that are in the final image walking through a rainy city. So. Um, yeah, the, the general idea is the same, just uh, the layout and the characters have changed a bit and, and at this stage of the process I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, um, what poses I want, what background I want and yeah, at, at this point I'm like, you know what, I want to do a drawing with three characters, not just the one, to have some more storytelling going on to have the characters interact with each other and yeah, tell a little bit of a story in the drawing itself, I guess. So yeah. This is where I was starting to, to like what I'm working on. Like originally, um, I had the first idea for, for this image sometime last year, so in 2021. Um, and then forgot about it because I was getting frustrated with it because it didn't quite look how I had imagined it. And um, yeah, once I once I moved away from just having one character and instead um, having three of them in this little image, uh, I was motivated again to get get started on the idea and finally bring it to paper, so to speak. So yeah, still in the process of figuring out poses and stuff here, composition, whether or not I want, to, want it to be a close-up or maybe incorporate more of the surrounding scenery and show some of the architecture of the city and yeah, this is, this is moving closer to what the final image is looking like. Kitty is there. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is um, a nighttime scenery, as you can see, with some funny sparkling lights everywhere. Uh, I was wor working on this in large parts during my Twitch streams and I already talked a bit about who the characters are and what the city is there, but if you miss them or uh, if you like listening to the same stories twice, um, I guess the, the idea of the drawing is that these three characters who are good friends, uh, they're, they're part of my original project, The King of Ivandaria. They're good friends and they're roaming around the city uh, in the late evening during a festival. Um, 
basically in in their culture um water and rain have a very high position kind of like a, a very important culture culturally for a variety of reasons so that's why the drawing is called the rain festival so it's it's a special evening of a sad festival where, where um that's it's celebrated every year during the rainy season and yeah it's basically just an opportunity to um celebrate life as such and have some fun with your friends out and yeah now now it's basically just drawing wise i'm at the stage of fixing the anatomy figuring out what the characters are even doing with each other what they're what they might be talking about imagining a conversation they might be having and um, figuring out how they interact with each other. Uh, I've yeah, I've basically sped up uh, the process of all of this, so this is obviously not happening in real time. Uh, you'll notice that in some parts the video is gonna be going even faster than in others. Um, so I'm working with different speeds here because uh, overall uh, I spent roughly 36 hours on this whole piece and at parts where yeah, not, not a lot of interesting stuff so to say is happening. So where I'm just fiddling with anatomy or fiddling with a specific detail for hours <laughs> the video is gonna be um, going a little bit faster than otherwise and, and even like at this stage it's uh, sped up to about 700 percent i think so it's going very very fast compared to how uh, how it looks like when i'm working in real time just just so you know just as information that i'm not doing this live or um manage to work that accurately that fast and that's that's not that would be nice it would be nice actually if i could do that but i but i can't um but yeah meanwhile um characters have gotten some clothes uh the way i always i, I basically do it always like this when i have characters in more complicated poses that i draw the bodies first and um like naked basically without anything on them to have the anatomy as accurate as possible but I know there is still um, a lot of room for improvement and admittedly I'm sometimes just too lazy to do my studies or to do my practice for anatomy but I should I, I should do it more often I'm just I'm just a lazy butt sometimes but yeah anatomy first and then I add clothing on top and um, yeah, I've basically almost always done it like that or at least as soon as I started doing art more um, seriously I had started to do it like that because it just gives you nicer results when you have the anatomy figured out before you think about clothing um, yeah, at this point I'm, I'm thinking very hard about backgrounds already. Suddenly there's two shops and a street and more houses appearing in the background. Um, still in Procreate, but um, in a couple of minutes or a minute or so we're switching over to Photoshop when I'm starting on the line art. Because I do like Procreate a lot for sketching and for doing simple doodly drawings but this one um, I wanted to give a more crisp appearance and here we go Photoshop inf interface yeah I, I have a, a brush in Photoshop for line art specifically um, that I just love too much and that I definitely wanted to use for this drawing I'm I have tried to make a similar brush in Procreate but um, 
doesn't just doesn't have the same feel as the Photoshop one. So I'm, usually when I do very line art heavy artwork like here, um, I resort to Photoshop still. And as you might might be able to recognize if you use Photoshop yourself, this isn't the newest version. This is uh, Photoshop CS6. So the last one that you could actually buy before the Creative Cloud stuff happened. And I still have it and I'm gonna use it as long as I can. <laughs> because at least for, for my purposes it's more than enough. So yeah, lots and lots of details here now, as soon as I'm starting the line art. Um, whenever I'm drawing something related to Ivan Dario, you'll probably, hopefully, maybe, uh, see that I feature a lot of designs with circles, circular designs. I don't know. Um, yeah, also it's it's also on purpose, also a part of the culture of um, these people in particular, the Nier. Uh, they believe in rebirth, like in uh, basically an endless cycle where their souls get reborn over and over and over again and um, basically come into the mortal plane of existence to grow and to make new experiences and yeah just just live many different lives kind of and to do better in the next in a way or to do different in the next and see see what happens more or less very 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 simply put and so yeah, circles kind of represent in their culture this eternal circle of rebirths. And so they are, or rather, so, so I choose to feature them commonly in a variety of designs, be it jewelry, clothing, see, you know, the little circle ring thing at the hem of her coat dress. So yeah, whenever you, whenever you have to deal with the near and I haven't dare you'll probably come across a circle you said when you, when, when I say when you have to deal with the near it's like a burden who want who would want to deal with them but no I I love them um so yeah I think I'm gonna gonna speed the video up a little bit again because all we're gonna see for a while now is line art of the three protagonists of the drawing. So here we go. Um, yeah, let, let me tell you a little bit about who the three protagonists are, I guess, and what makes them special and why I decided to draw them here. Um, this fellow here in the middle is Adovan. He is yeah, one, one of the first characters really that I ever came up with for this whole story. Um, in our recent stream, I'm not sure if, if the recap is on my channel here already. But in a, in a recent art only stream or art mostly stream, I showed some old artworks of him that I still have from like 2012, 2013. And everyone was very surprised how uh, much he changed and how much he didn't change in some other regards. But yeah, Adovan is one of my favorite characters that I made ever. Like, of my original characters. Definitely of my Ivan Derry characters, he's uh, in the top three. He, no, you know, I'm not gonna lie, he's he's uh, in first spot, always will be. <laughs> um, and yeah, obviously he's also one of the main protagonists of the King of Ivan Derry. 
and yeah and, and this part like this this image basically takes place this drawing takes place at the very beginning of the events of the king of Ivandaria. Um, so basically where the world is still nice and fun and you don't have to worry about any great decisions that may might change the fate of the world forever or anything like so anything like that so it's just Adamant and his sister and their best friend since childhood days enjoying a night out not worrying too much about everything this is um this here is uh, Carrion. He's Adavin's best friend. Uh, also Briella's best friend. Briella is the girl on the right that uh, I did the line art first for. And yeah, out of out of the three of them, Carrion is definitely the one um, the most the most responsible one. I would say the one who. Uh, make sure the other two don't get themselves into trouble too much. Also, I love drawing his hair. So many details. I, this, this took forever, but I loved it. I, I really like drawing braids and, and stuff and everything in detailed hair. And yeah. Hasn't always been like that. Hair was not always my friend, but meanwhile, it's one of my favorite things to draw. So you... In, in this setting, you will see a lot of characters with long hair, because... <laughs> I, I, just, I just enjoy drawing long hair. Styling long hair, whatever. Um... But yeah, Carrion, as I said, is the most responsible one, the most serious one, I guess, out of the three. And in, in this little scene that I made up, uh, it's a little story that's being told here. He and Adovan had bet on something. And uh, he, he lost the bet, he owes him some money or something like that. And uh, is just about to drop the coins into his hand and still reprimands him a little bit like this is the last time I'm gonna bet with you on, on something like that so do, don't tempt me and Adovan will definitely tempt him again and Briella is just amused by their shenanigans so at this, at this part this is one of my favorite parts of um, making line art I guess just uh, playing a little bit with line weight when everything is done like when every all, all the lines are finished for a part of the drawing in this case the character so I'm, I'm usually thickening uh, the lines on, on the outside or on parts I want to emphasize to make everything look a little bit more dynamic I'm adding a clipping mask as a preparation for coloring and yeah, now we've already moved on to the background. So fast. We should <laughs> would have been that fast in uh, in real time. But yeah, more and more line art. Let me think. What could I tell you a bit about? the architecture of the near um, the city that the three protagonists Brilla and Adovan Carrion are in is Panthil which is the capital of um, Ivan Darius large island Mangarth and the people on Mangarth are Not, not very, but relatively uh, religiously devout, I would say. Like, um, there's a character called Aman who started out as a mortal and later on became a god through 
a variety of complicated circumstances that I might might explain in another video, maybe when I'm drawing around at some point. Um, but yeah, Amman originally came from the city as well, and so the inhabitants of Panthal are, are very proud of that fact, and um, for that reason try to live in the way a man would would like, I guess, would like it the most, and so um, there's there's a lot of uh, religious rules, I would say. Um, when it comes to various aspects of life, when it comes to uh, eating meat, for example, like you're not supposed, like uh, th there's a re religious rule or guideline that says do not. Uh, kill animals just for the purpose of food doesn't say do not eat meat but uh, it says do not kill animals just for the purpose of food and there is something similar uh, when it comes to building houses like you're not supposed for example to chop down trees for the purpose of building so you will not see a lot of wood featured in uh, most of Panfield's buildings, with the exception of these um, little... Um, oh no, what's the word in English? The, the wooden bars under that roof uh, that we don't see now anymore because I'm too slow with my explanations. Uh, that, but yeah, those, those wooden pieces, all wood, all wood really that you're... Or most of the wood that you're gonna see in Panfield's buildings uh, is driftwood or otherwise dead wood. Because they're like, yeah, Amman said in, in their teachings, do not chop down trees. So we're gonna let nature chop down trees and then use those. In a way. But yeah, instead, um, uh, you will see a lot of metal being used in buildings and stone. Metal, metal and stone really is uh, are, are the favorite building materials of the near of Panthal. Of the near in, in general, really. Unless there is just like plenty of wood available. And there's also a subgroup of the near actually who live in living trees and, and manipulate trees in their growth to live in them, kind of. Very wood elfy. Because <laughs> wood elves are cool. But yeah, this street scene um, features mostly stone and metal, the buildings, and um, a little metal grate in the floor. And um, It's a, it's a, the climate on Mangarth in Panthal is kind of humid all around the year, basically, humid and, and stormy. And so there's a lot of moss and stuff growing on most buildings. And, oh yeah, this, oh yeah, we're moving on so fast. I'm, I'm impressed. Good work, Ellen. You're working like a champ. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't stop with that stupid joke. Um, but yeah, background. Uh, one of... Yeah, Ivan Darius' import, most important landmarks, I guess. Definitely uh, Panthal's most outstanding landmark is the tower on that rock formation in the background. Um, funnily enough, it doesn't even necessarily belong there. Um... At least it wasn't originally built there. But that is a very long story as well. And yeah, here in, in this street, like this, two buildings in the foreground, um, of which Leonard is finished already, are I imagined as shops or restaurants. And uh, there's something similar going on here with the buildings in the immediate background, like um, little shops and stuff uh, with uh, the shop owners, living quarters under the roof, things like that. So a, a big display window in most of the buildings and a little shop sign somewhere 
saying what you can get there. This uh, house... No, this, this is actually... I, I was picturing it to be something like a school or... Yeah, may, may, maybe a school or a, um, an alchemist's house or something like that with a rooftop garden. And in the background here, some more living quarters in fun little shapes to break up the scene a little bit. And rocks, rocks, rocks. Uh, Panthel is built on a cliff, basically. And Mangarth as a whole is a very rocky, harsh looking island. Um, Influenced by its volcanic activity. And here I figured that the perspective on the tower platform wasn't right and fixed it. Before moving on to some minor characters and minor kittens in the foreground to add some life to the streets. Because as I said in the beginning, this is actually supposed to be a, yeah, a, a happy day a festival so the streets have to be a little bit lively can't just be the three of them wandering around have to be some more people um even in this slightly seedy dingy quarter of town and a cat because why not because i, I just like uh putting cats in drawings don't judge me this dude here uh we called Codeman on stream and Codeman is causing me a lot of troubles because he I, I can't decide where I want to position him unlike uh, this lady here in the background having a smoke and looking at the fancy lights of the city she can stay where she is these two uh, as well maybe they're I, I pictured them as as friends or maybe um uh, as, as being out on a date or something and just having a fun evening together. Um, but yeah, Codeman is a nuisance. But yeah, with that, um, the line art is done of um, all the characters of everything in the background and Oh yeah, right. I, I actually started with uh, coloring the background first. Usually I, um, yeah, usually I do the foreground first, but uh, I, I wanted to do the background first to get a feel for the scenery and maybe also for, um, uh, yeah, for for what colors I'm gonna give to the protagonist's clothes to have it all kind of blend in nicely and still have them stand out, in a way. But yeah. Painting... Uh, well, not, not really painting. More like coloring in uh, the houses in the area. Uh, as you saw, like, uh, at the end of the Leonard um, progress, I... Um, colored in the various layers like I, I had a color for uh, the various layers of the background and for the three protagonists which are my clipping masks that I'm uh, now using so you can see I can I can kind of roughly paint in this building don't have to be too careful about coloring in the lines when it comes to uh, the neighboring background because it's all tied to the clipping mask. I'm very bad ex at explaining this. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I still have to learn. That's why I said in, in the intro, don't take this as a tutorial necessarily because I'm, yeah, sometimes I'm very, very bad at explaining stuff like this, like what I'm doing and also there's probably ways to do this all um, better. <laughs> although, I, although I feel like my, my progress over the years has definitely 
got more efficient compared to what I did in the early days. Oh no, now here I realized that the perspective of the window is off. Perspective is hard. Perspective is my enemy and now by resizing it like that with the transformation tool I messed up everything around it. So I have to fix this little uh, lamp hanging from the shop signs. And fix all the colors on the window frame. Yeah, I, I should have paid better attention here about um, the window. I should have probably made a proper perspective grid. But uh, in comes my lazy butt again. And then I have to pay for it by having slightly wonky perspective sometimes and, and fiddling. Fiddling uh, in the coloring process where I realize, oh, this doesn't look good. But yeah, learn from my mistakes, guys. Oh well, yeah, here we are again at the at the wooden beams, I guess. Driftwood. Um, very weathered color. And here I'm I'm starting to realize, no, I don't like this color palette at all. I think, I think, at some point I will realize I don't like this color palette pa palette a lot. So. There's going to be some changes to most of the colors you've seen so far happening on this building. Um, yeah, most of it here, as you can see, is metal, a metal roof, basically with these swirly lines that I've just adopted as, I don't know, decorative elements and a lot of... Uh, my Avendaria art. Because I, I, I enjoy them for some reason. Like, uh, I think on uh, Adavin's and Briella's jewelry, you will also see them. Maybe you didn't see them in the progress because I had sped it up a little bit. Um, but I mean, the, the drawing is finished. It's out there on my social media. You can have a look at it. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you can even look at it in all its glory in full resolution. Um, but yeah, I also wanted to add some ropes to this roof because Pantho is a harbor city. A port town. What is the right word? I don't know. English is not my native language. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, j Just as a general thing, whenever I say something weird, I, I blame it on English not being my native language. I apologize. Please don't remind me of my accent. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pentel is a port town. And uh, so I wanted to add at least a few kind of nautical elements like this rope. And um, yeah, here I decided to vary the color of the stones a little bit to have it um, all look a little more organic and not like these stones were made in a factory or something. So they all have slightly different hues because they come from nature, from the surrounding areas. And... Um, yeah, have, have the thing look a little bit more interesting overall, I guess. Variation make things, makes things more interesting, especially backgrounds. Like, I think a lot of artists, when they start out, or at least like, when, you, when you're like me, an artist like me, that enjoys drawing characters and starts out with drawing characters, uh, drawing anime protagonists, their favorite anime characters, their favorite whatever characters um, you maybe don't like drawing backgrounds that much at least I, I always hesitated with my backgrounds when I started out and here I'm changing everything now because I realized I don't like the color palette I'm gonna make it a little darker and um, 
yeah, working working with uh, contrasting colors like a bluish bluish gray stone of the wall and some black and brown and yellow gold tones. Contrasts are nice. Color contrast is important. Can really make details pop. But yeah, was what I was uh, just about to explain. Um, when I was still an aspiring artist with not much experience, I was always very insistent about drawing backgrounds because I wasn't used to them and I was intimidated by them because I don't know all the details, but meanwhile, as you can maybe tell from this drawing, uh, meanwhile I really enjoy drawing backgrounds. I'm not, I'm not an expert at it by no means, but I'm not scared of complicated backgrounds anymore, at least I would say. And I mean, backgrounds can add so much to a scene can can tell so many stories like for example here this column um being rusty and and overgrown with moss and stuff uh this wall here with some rust and dirt dripping uh under the window frame gives you some ideas about how the climate might be like in that city, for example. At least that's what I was thinking when I was adding these details. And here's some rope again for the uh, maritime touch, <laughs> I guess. And I'm trying to stick to my my basic color palette of blues and yellows for this nightly scenery. And yeah, also this um, little banner here, the shop sign, made from a paper-like material or something like that, and it's torn a little bit here and there uh, to give you an idea what part of town we might be in. And here's some more world-building lore stuff. These lamps are made from a special material called star glass which glows when it gets wet, which is a super convenient light source when you live in a place with a lot of rain. So Penful has a lot of these star glass lamps that uh, glow when it's rainy. And particularly during events like the rain festival, you will see um, a lot of those glowy lamps outside. They come in a variety of colors and shapes and sizes, as you'll see as we move on to the further background, but yeah. First we gotta finish this. Moss, moss, moss. There's another word that I'm thinking of for these kind of growths, but I can't I can't think of it right now. It's not necessarily moss, it's it's a kind of plant that grows on all kinds of places. Usually that kind of light greenish bluish color. I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense most of the time. Um, yeah, adding some color variation here to make it also look a little bit more organic. There is a nice setting in Photoshop. Um, I don't know what it's called, color variation, something like that for your brushes, where you can kind of, where it automatically varies the colors a little bit as you paint. I, I really enjoy using that for, for organic stuff like plants and things to, to make everything look a little bit more interesting. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is uh, use some um, very, very textured brushes. And also, I, I think something like the color variation setting to, to give the stones a little bit more texture. Also the column and yeah, all, all the details on that building. 
these old posters and pamphlets and whatnot as well. To make it all look just a little more realistic, I guess. More more weathered, more like a house that might actually be standing there in the city. Not just uh, a scenery, a prop. And final thing for this house is the window, I guess. Um, yeah, also sticking again to, to my blue color palette. Actually, I, I figured out for myself that um, for some reason, um, whenever I draw a character or a scene from Panthel or from Mangarth in general, I, I always drift to that uh, purple, blue, green color palette for some reason. So maybe that's just the corporate identity <laughs> of that of that setting. I don't know. I just I just enjoy this color combination. Okay, what what now? What are you doing? Past me. I don't remember. Ah, cleaning up uh, the wall of that house and moving on to the next. All right. Uh, then I would say I speed this one up a bit again because it's mostly the same stuff happening as on the other side. I think. What now? Ah, adding some more rustiness to the wall. Am I gonna speed it up? I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna speed up the background. Or at least when I... Yeah, some grime and dirt. Very good. Yeah, because this, is, this isn't the nicest part of town. Sorry that I sound so surprised at what, what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a while since I was at this stage of the drawing. I'm Yeah, this is I'm I'm currently the way I'm the way I'm doing is this I'm watching um the pre rendered uh video in my um video editing program and then just talking over it and explaining what I'm seeing and trying to remember what I was thinking when I was working on this. Well, this building has a little bit of a dis different structure than the other one. It's a little bit more fancy, but still a little bit worn, as you can see here. Like on stream, I was joking maybe this bar that's holding up the curtains at the entrance once uh, came loose and smacked a customer in the head. And so um, they had to haphazardly fix it, but it's it's still not looking safe. That's that's what I mean when I when I say backgrounds and their details can tell can tell fun stories as well. Like I don't know I I as a kid I really enjoyed um, like those picture books like Where's Waldo and this kind of stuff where you have just these huge sceneries with so many details and. I don't know, there was so much going on, so many little stories happening on, on these two pages of the book spread out in front of you. And I guess in a, in a way, I have I have that little ambition to, to be a little bit like the Where's Waldo books <laughs> with my backgrounds. <laughs> Adding some fun details for people to discover when they look closer. But yeah, this is another restaurant, bar, tavern building. Um, yeah, predominantly made from stone, also a little overgrown with moss and stuff. And uh, this little wind chime here, I guess, on um yeah on this on this metal decorative element which is a little bit rusty to I don't know to to get customers attention I guess I mean just as much as backgrounds can tell stories sometimes they just sometimes 
they don't have to. Sometimes they just there to be nice as well, to be to be interesting to look at. Although I guess I mean it's 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 still it's still a part of the story. It's still part of the world building. Adding details like that, like having a wind chime there, suggests that it is probably windy there. Like a wind chime that's that's permanently installed on your building. Now rusting up the metal a little bit more on that roof. And again some textures for the stones of the wall. And I promise I'm not forgetting the banners and the curtains at the entrance. <laughs> I have way too many brushes, but sometimes for, for this purpose, it's nice to have a lot of different textured brushes. So what now? What, what about the curtains? Where are we? Yeah, right. Almost forgot about it. I saw that. And yeah, while, while the building on the right is more heavy on the blue tones, I guess this one is a little bit more heavy on the yellow tones to balance it out. But for the banner, we're going back to blue. Also a very simple banner, because we are in a... not, not in the fanciest part of town. Because I, I have some ideas for different types of shop banners and signs in more fancy part of towns. Because like... oh, I, I just the other day I saw the perfect post for this actually. Um, someone, someone wrote, I, I like my fantasy stories when they're like sci-fi and I like my sci-fi stories when they're like fantasy. And that is, that is very on point. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I don't know, I, I enjoy adding stuff to, to this world that gives it more of a sci-fi vibe, kind of. Like basically the the star glass lamps that come in various colors that are almost like neon lamps in appearance and yeah giving giving the whole fantasy somewhat medieval ish landscape a different twist. So I'd, I'd say in, in more fancy part of towns you might not have uh, fabric banners like here that are hand painted and hand uh, with, with hand written shop names and whatnot but maybe you'll have like a magical shop sign that I don't know changes depending on what's on the menu or Maybe it's just fancy and close to attract customers and to, to show them like this is a fancy establishment. Also, this is completely made up, this these scribbles. It's just um Yeah, I don't I don't have a writing system. Like I don't have a, an alphabet for Ivan Daria yet. Problem is that there is various languages being spoken, so in theory I'd have to make up various writing systems anyway, and I, I didn't get around to doing that yet. But I, but I want to, because actually I do enjoy making up uh, like fictional alphabets and everything. So yeah, this is a, a soup place, and this is a I don't really know place. I guess, from the signs. I, I can't read what they're saying. I have no idea. Maybe maybe a shop sign that displays, like that switches um, what's displayed in, in various languages, kind of. I need, to, I need to note that down, otherwise I'll forget. And yeah, here's someone... Um, very cheekily plastered some ads for their own restaurant down the street with a little menu. 
and this is probably just uh, just an announcement about how uh, Anna, about how everyone hates the king and how the king is making bad decisions and oh no maybe it's a menu as well <laughs> But yeah, so much to these buildings in the foreground. I think I think they're done in their base colors. Yeah. So yeah, we're currently basically at the at the progress. Uh, progress wise, we're at the point where I'm drawing in all the base colors, as if uh, the scenery was lit by completely white light. Kind of is how how I read it phrased somewhere before. So just the most natural looking colors with no influence of any light sources around, uh, which is gonna happen later on. I think I think at this point I can definitely speed up the video a little bit again because what's gonna happen next is basically the same progress of of um coloring in the street here and then moving on to all the buildings in the background so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that now and we're at like this this kind of speed is like 14,000 percent for no 1400 percent something like that so super duper sped up um, yeah, again, I'm adding some variation to the stones on the ground here. Uh, coloring in the grate before I forget it, adding some textures. You know the deal. Oh, I forgot about the light in, in that house. But yeah, now background time. Here I'm... Um, yeah, also trying to stick to my, to my um, colors that I established in the foreground. Fixing up the line art here and there a bit because... Um, it didn't. I, I'm I'm a horrible, horrible perfectionist when it comes to line art. It always has has to be super crisp and super clean. Um. I'm I'm awful like that. <laughs> like even even if it's not, if no one's ever gonna look at it that close up, I I still have to have my clean line art everywhere. Uh, but yeah, here I'm I'm actually changing up the color a little bit. Getting a little more into the reddish bits. All these buildings like that I'm painting currently are going to be mostly covered up by the three protagonists in the foreground anyway. But I wanted to still draw a complete background to maybe reuse it somewhere else later on. Like for example, I'm, I'm using it as a break screen on Twitch. For at the moment with some rainy effects and everything which is which is nice to have and also just uh, was was a good exercise to explore different buildings and what they might look like and it's an exercise in concept art if you want um, yeah painting the rocks here and I think I think it should be visible that I'm slightly changing up the color of part of the rocks. Yeah, here. Slightly changing the hue of that top part. Because the fun story about the tower uh, on top of the white one, the big one, is that it wasn't originally built here. But during a conflict that lies about 50 years in the past, um, it was threatened to be destroyed by enemy forces enemies of, of the near of Mangarth basically and uh, so their their ruler at the time kind of in a, in a very impressive magical act took the tower and moved it somewhere else moved it into into his city to have it protected because it is a culturally very important building uh, culturally, spiritually, historically, would have, it would have been an immense loss to to have see that building destroyed. But then uh, adding the obligatory two fantasy moons, 
and playing around with some cloud brushes that I had flying around to make a nice nightly scenery with stars and rain clouds and everything. And yeah, that is uh, the background colors done. And I can finally start painting. I, I keep saying painting. It's it's not it's not really painting. I keep uh, I, I can start coloring my protagonists. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely left that for the end of the process as well. Not not only because I wanted to uh, have an established color palette, but also because I enjoy drawing or, or coloring characters a lot. So it, it, I left it for the end as a little treat for myself, like something to look forward to. Because it. it I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy drawing backgrounds meanwhile, as I said, but it was still daunting to draw all those buildings and all that stuff. And I don't have that much experience with huge detailed backgrounds yet, so... I left uh, the thing that I'm more comfortable with for the end. To have something to look forward to. <laughs> to motivate myself to keep going with the backgrounds and not give up. And I did it! And fixing up some more line art mistakes that I'm noticing now. And fixing up some weird color mistakes that I'm noticing. And then back. <laughs> it's always always going back to, to previous steps and fixing up stuff that I only just then discovered again. Yeah, I'm also with when I color characters, I work with a lot of different layers. Like I have my clipping mask, which is just the base shape of their whole bodies. And then I have usually separate layers for their skin, for um, details on the skin like blush or uh, freckles and things like that. And then a different layer for, for their hair or for patterns on the clothing like here for example. Usually goes on separate layers in case I want to change things up. Adding some blush and some variation to the skin to make them look more lively. Because skin is, skin is a very fiddly thing to do. Very special thing to do, I guess, because... I don't know, I feel like it's, it sometimes just looks too flat when I don't add in a little bit of, of variation and blushiness and imperfections. Just makes makes people look more like people when they don't have perfect, flawless skin. Codeman again, who will uh, soon be removed from that position. And of course the aforementioned kitty, which may or may not be inspired by my cat. <laughs> and yeah, background characters. I keep wanting to refer to them as NPCs. I'm... <laughs> yeah, I'm... I'm You know, in my in my daydreamings about this world, I, world, I keep thinking, oh, what what would a game set in this world be like? What would a movie of this world look like? I don't know. The NPCs. I'm here. I'm coloring in the line art a little bit because completely black line art can look a little bit harsh sometimes. And oh, oh, we're at shading already. Moving on fast. Yeah, my, my shading process is kind of simple and always basically the same too. Um, I yeah, I, I make a new layer in the shape of my base colors and uh, set it to multiply, which is my shadows, and then just draw in the shadows with the help of. Uh, a layer mask and uh, let me tell you the the shadows and lights and all that in the scene were complex because it was just a lot of different light sources going on like you have the lights coming outside from the windows and from the door you have the lights of uh, the moons you have the light uh, of the lamps it's a lot of, lot of different fun light sources to, to keep in mind but, uh, but I really enjoyed that because it makes it even more colorful. Uh, 
uh, yeah, here was a test of doing some reflections of uh, on, on the ground because the city is supposed to be wet by rain. But I put that back for later. I just, just want to do a quick, just wanted to do a quick uh, test here, I guess. Um, now the same thing again for the far background, but here the main light sources are is basically just uh, the moons. Um, so that that wasn't that wasn't too bad, not too much to keep in mind here. Only as we move further to the foreground, there's more light sources with importance coming in again, like again, uh, lamps and uh, shop windows and things like that. And yeah, when, when I have my shadow layer, I duplicate it, invert my layer mask with the shadows, and then change up the color and set it to um, a different layer mode, like usually it's overlay or hard light or something like that, whichever looks nicest with the given setting and colors. And now adding in some special effects, all the little lights of the star glass lamps throughout the city. The tower here, Avon Mon, has some fancy star glass embedded into its walls as well. And then, oh boy, yeah, this this was a struggle. So many light sources on on the characters to keep in mind here again. Oh, I'm moving around an awful lot. I'm sorry. I hope this uh, isn't isn't too annoying to watch. So wiggly. Um, but yes, you you also see that even some of the jewelry the characters are wearing has uh, star glass. So, like for example, this piece on Briella's ear is made with star glass so it glows when it's wet which is why that kind of jewelry is popular to be worn during uh, the evenings or just for, for for the rain festival or any other occasion where it's dark outside and raining and you you actually have time to wander around outside Yeah, here I, I was struggling a bit with where the shadows on Adamant's face should go because he is kind of being being in the middle. He is kind of affected by sources from from both sides. Once by the door on the left with the very warm bright light, and then also by the more cool light coming from the right and the lamps coming from the top. So I, I still have. I, I should work with references more often when it comes to lighting. I really should. Eyeballing is not always the best strategy. Also, I I, I have troubles like uh, working. Um, like I always have to start with the shadows, for example. I can't start. Uh, Figuring out where light goes first, I always have to start with the shadows when I'm when I'm drawing, and then add in the light second. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but I always have to do it like that. It doesn't work the other way around. I stick to my main three light colors in the scenery, scenery which is uh, yellow, uh, bright blue, and orange. This is the three main light colors. For the foreground, adding some highlights here and there, and now I think it's yeah time to add some glowiness, of course, and special effects. And I'm yeah now I'm I'm figuring out what to do with Codeman because he's been annoying me the entire time there. And so we kind of just decided to to let the kitty go to the bar. <laughs> this was a was a common decision on on stream. One evening was very funny, and Codeman goes to the right. And we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Um, the NPCs get their shadows and lights. It's 
some final highlights, then some rain effects here on the ground. Where I'm just basically copying the whole thing, flipping it, blurring it, and then kind of roughly painting it onto um, onto the ground where where it somewhat fits. It's not super accurate. Like if you if you'd look at it uh, at greater detail, you would see that it's not a, a super perfect fit, but it it works. It's it's the right effect at least. Adding some shadows, some special effects like splashes here and there, some fogginess because it is it's not cold necessarily uh, on Mangarth. Adding some rain by just sprinkling some stuff and then blurring it with a filter, a movement filter. Nice and easy way to do rain quickly. Adding some raindrops here and there. Some splashes on the roof, some splashes on the characters. Doing some final special effects like blurring the background a little bit to add more depth. Adjusting the colors. And some final, some final lights that I forgot up there. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. That is the drawing finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. First of its kind on my channel with this combination of lore stuff and art explanations, I guess. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more similar videos in the future. And I'll continue recording my progress on my big artworks. And otherwise, always feel free to come hang out on Twitch to see me draw live and answer art and world building questions you might have there. If you've watched this far, thank you so, so much. Um, if you enjoyed the video, consider checking out my Patreon um, to support not only my videos, but also my art in general, my streams, my writing. And yeah, have a nice day and see you soon in Ivendaria.